Okay, this one is about replacing the Robert Shaw HS780 with the Honeywell S8910U hot surface igniter control. They're both hot surface igniter ignition controls. The Robert Shaw 780 is not set up to be used with a flame rod. It used the hot surface igniter only. The Honeywell is a general replacement control. It could be used for both. Now, I'm not tearing down Robert Shaw uh, because Robert Shaw also makes a control that you can use a flame rod with. Now in this case I've got a HS780 uh, and it's a 306 means it uh, tries three times uh, before it shuts down. Now the Honeywell, because it's a general replacement, it can be set up for however many tries you want and uh, it's optional whether you use a flame rod with it or not. Now if you'll notice there's a little tab right there and if you look at that tab you can see it says uh, trials uh, four, trial four seconds that means the four second trial for ignition and it's a three try and it locks out. Now here you can see this is a uh, uh, Coleman CGU model first with a single burner. We're going to re be replacing this control here. And uh, I'm going to replace this control without the flame rod first, and then I'm going to put a flame rod in it. And you can, uh, we're going to look at the Honeywell. I want, well, let's show you something back at this Honeywell. Okay, on the Honeywell control, we have what's called a, a heartbeat light. That's right there. It should go bright, dim, bright, dim. If it doesn't, if it starts blinking completely off and back on, it means we have a minimal flame sense current. In other words, it's not sensing flame very well from the hot surface igniter. So we may want to put a flame rod as a field installed uh, item. Okay, we have the control installed. And I kind of wanted to go over this rat's nest full of wires. And maybe we can figure out how it actually is set up. Okay, let's start from this one end. Okay, I am still using the flame rod, or the hot surface igniter is a flame rod. So I leave this jumper in place. Now here I've got the first one over. And Honeywell is a little bit goofy on these things. Because sometimes it's hard to line up the, the letters with which terminals which. But the first one is hot surface igniter. Okay, that's this wire here. It's going into the burner for the hot surface igniter. Okay. The next one over is L1. Okay, that's the hot lead. Now, this is 120 volts, so be sure you got this sucker shut off before you start fooling around in here. Uh, and this is coming from the board over here. Now, you can use a wiring diagram for this, and there are several wiring diagrams when the when you buy the unit but I'm gonna go over it as I can okay I had pulled this hot H1 uh, or L1 excuse me off of the old control let's look at the old control here and we had okay right here we had L1 is 120 volt that's that wire okay We've got L2, which is white, right here. That's going to the L2, right there. Okay, and this control is going to be L2 neutral. So white wire. Okay, that's all the 120 volt wiring there is. The rest of this is all uh, low voltage stuff. Okay, before we get any farther, I wanted to just kind of indicate that there is a ground or chassis neutral whatever you want to call it uh, it's not really a neutral but there is a ground on the transformers in these things they require a ground in order for the flame safety to work so when i'm talking about ground i'm talking about chassis in this uh, control 
we have ground burner. That means it goes right to the chassis of the unit. Okay, if you look there, we got this black wire going right over here, and it goes to a screw on the chassis. Now we've got two other wires coming on there off of this right here. One is here. That's going to that ground screw, and it's going to the 24 volt GND or chassis. So they're actually, these two wires are going to the same place, uh, not on the same terminals, but they actually go the same place on this unit because they're all going to chassis ground down here. Okay, now we've got a third ground, and that one is the valve ground. Okay, that's this wire right here. And we'll get widened up a little bit. We'll get over there. Okay, so I'm going to take the, the valve ground right here and I'm going to run it and it's going to come over to this terminal here which is the ground of the gas valve. Now I don't think it's actually ground, grounded inside the gas valve but it is the chassis ground. So it goes to this side of the gas valve. You've got another wire here and this one uh, it actually, I'm not going to show where it goes, you can't see it, but it actually goes up to the transformer, the, uh, the common of the transformer. So, that one goes to the valve, that's your valve, the ground side of the valve. And then we have the 24 volt that goes to the control. That's right there where it says 24 feet. Now that comes up, on this one, it goes straight to the pressure switch. Okay, now we've hooked up the all the all these terminals here that are all going to chassis, and uh, we've got one left, and that says valve. On the old control, it also says valve. There, it's the same place. That's the hot side of the valve. And if you follow this over, this valve over, you can see. It goes on to the gas valve right here. Hopefully this makes sense. Now we're going to fire this thing off and what I want to do is I want to see if this thing is going to work normally without a flame rod. The way I'm going to see that is I'm going to look at that little blinky heartbeat light. Okay when I start this thing off there's your light right there right in that little hole there. Okay, you can see that light doing its little heartbeat. Okay, there's our heartbeat. The burners come on. Notice we're getting little blinks in it. Now what we're looking for, you can see, we're getting kind of little flashes in that light. Uh, it's not getting enough flame sense. Now you see where we get that kind of blinky blinky sort of stuff? It's not steady blinks or any of the failure codes. It's showing it's not getting a good flame sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a flame rod in here and see if we can stop that. Okay, the burner's coming on. Burner is on. We've got our flame rod installed. And that's replacing the 780 with the S89 Honeywell control. Okay, before we fire this thing, or before we leave this thing, 
we put the new control on, we've got it to work. Now we're going to test all the safeties in the entire furnace. We want to want to test every safety. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this line off here while it's running. Uh, I'll get the burner going and then we will pull this line off to make sure the pressure switch shuts off. Okay, the unit is now running and I'm going to pull off this line. I don't know if you could hear that, but I did hear the gas valve click and the uh, burner shut down. So we know the pressure switch works. Okay, we have the unit running again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the gas valve to imitate uh, flame failure. Okay, if you can hear that gas valve click, it did shut off. Now, this unit is going to try a total of three times. And then the little light down there is going to blink a code. So we'll get down in that light and after this has happened. Now, this is going to take probably five minutes. I'm not going to let you wait that long, but it will probably take about five minutes for this thing to shut down into a hard lockout. Okay, you can see during this uh, soft lockout period where it's going to continue to try to ignite you still have your heartbeat and that's normal for it until it goes into hard lockout now you can see uh, we are blinking the one flash which tells me it's gone out on lockout and you look if you look on the control, you can see the second one down says one flash is for ignition lockout. So it has safety out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check one last thing, and that will be the limit switch. Okay, to check the limit, the limit's behind here. I do not need access to the limit switch to check and see if it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the white wire off the fan motor. Okay, notice I've disconnected the fan, the white wire from the fan motor and wire nutted it off. So we're going to fire this thing up. That means I'm going to recycle uh, the power to this thing. Let it start and go until it limits out. Okay, you can't really see the flame in there, but it is running. And it's going to go, and then I'll hear the click of the gas valve, and that should tell me it has shut down. I'm going to go to a snake camera so we can see what happens inside. Okay, you can see the hot surface igniters on. Okay, this is a look inside the hot surface igniters on, and the burner's going to light. Uh, I cut out a whole bunch of this because this takes four or five minutes for this thing to shut off, and so I'm just going to show you that the burner is on as it is there, and when the limit goes off, it's just going to turn the burner off. Okay, once that burner is gone off, you've checked all the safety, so go ahead and hook up your white wire again. Be sure you pull the, pull the power before you do that one. And uh, get the fan running again. Make sure the burner comes back on again so that you know it's operating when you leave. 